we do always like to start off the show with a summary of kind of what we saw happening in the stock market this week. Really spectacular week. Yeah, it's actually. a great run so far. It really is. It's incredible. And I'm going to go through my checklist again because I've been getting a lot of questions about that. Uh, talked about this last week. I'll update a couple pieces of that and show you. But in essence, you know, seems like everybody else had a similar checklist because once mm -hmm. everything was checked off, this market is really gone. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's very significant what's happening right now in terms of this market motion. We've actually been talking about this really all year since the middle of January when we kind of finally hit a new high. We've been talking about the market kind of doing the right things, the things that we like to see. And so we've seen this big run up here. Uh, and I think one of the things that's very significant this week uh, that is very pleasing to me, if you recall last week, we were talking about the run that the market was having was kind of narrow. And we even had a really great visual showing kind of the top seven stocks mm -hmm. on the S&P 500 versus the other 493. Yeah. And I just saw a headline uh, today saying the, four, the S&P 493, they're calling it now, uh, is, is now participating in this run. Mm -hmm. I'm not surprised. We talked about the fact that we felt the narrowness was because of the debt ceiling. Usually when you have narrowness, it's a sign that things might be petering out, right? Uh, and you need that breadth to kind of get yourself convinced that this is for real, that things are going to move. And I think because the debt ceiling money was being funneled into these, the seven companies they're talking about have huge cash positions, lots of cash flow, great name recognition, those types of things, you know, the Microsofts, the Apples, the Googles, et cetera. And so, you know, as the market has adjusted to the debt ceiling, you know, being resolved, so to speak, until January of 2025, uh, we started to see some more breadth come into the market and uh, really big inflows are happening into funds right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see it, it's coming through in the charts and such also. So very, very nice market. And of course, we've had a green signal going for our uh, stock market indicator uh, since uh, early May. And so we're still green on the fast mm -hmm. and green on the slow. And so again, just to reiterate, these are signals that we have developed. They have a multitude of different things that come into play to kind of figure out you know what is happening but the main key thing that we look at is the movement in the stock market price i'm a big believer that a lot of the things are already baked into the price a lot of knowledge that you and i don't have so i mean a great example is the debt ceiling so i probably had the most calls and emails about this particular event that i've had in the last 12 months was about this debt ceiling as it got closer to the edge and what have you Yet if you watch the market, it didn't fall. Mm -hmm. It didn't even have a 5% fall from one high point to another. It sat there. It didn't move a lot. There was volatility. Uh, there was reason to be concerned. But the market was, you know, okay with what was happening. And we see that a lot. And you really want to kind of pay attention to that because, you know, theoretically, there's an awful lot of participants in the market. There's a lot of money. There's a lot of intelligence that's going in there. And when it's moving and so that plays now too because when you look at the headlines now what are they saying right they're saying hey we still have this big recession coming yeah. the federal reserve is uh you know gonna over raise rates uh, and we'll talk about what the Federal reserve did this week and, and some of the things they said but when you look at that market it's not believing that particular story yeah they're projecting it further out and they're not worried about the recession possibility of recession yeah and all of the second half of last year was about this big recession we were going to have in the first half of this year and we start off the year going up right away yeah. uh you know came down and came back up and but no nothing really you know signaling to me from the stock market motion that things were really going to be falling apart now that can change right so things can happen uh but Let's just take a look at the checklist again real quickly that happened, because I think this is important to kind of understand. And so the theory is there's a primary direction and you really want to be invested in that primary direction. So if the primary direction is down, you can see that blue line there at connecting those tops. And that's how you look at direction for down. You connect the tops and for up, you connect the bottoms. Right. Mm -hmm. And so obviously we had a primary direction down in 2022, no doubt. They raised rates a lot. You know, inflation was very high. We hit 9% on the CPI and you know, all those things. And then 
what you're looking for is when that changes uh, and so that you can feel more comfortable with getting into the market. And, you know, you probably should always be in the market with some portion. Uh, we're a big advocate of that. But, you know, how much you have in, what type of risk you're taking can change depending on market situations. Uh, and so uh, the, the signals on our bond market are a little bit different. Uh, we have a green still on the, on the fast and a yellow on the slow. And so this is somewhat important because we are seeing some softness in the bond market. Mm -hmm. And so the bond market is reacting a bit more like the articles would like them to do in sense of, hey, there is some potential for higher interest rates, which could create some problems. And that's usually the one main thing that bothers the bond market is when rates are going up, the values go down, right? Still green and yellow, but we're still seeing some softness even in that green. You know, the fast signal is very close. So, you know, we're, we're still watching that as far as that goes. And we'll talk about that differential here in a moment. But first thing on a checklist for me was just kind of breaking that trend line. So I trained it to red here just because it was a down motion. But we broke through it twice, uh, once really, uh, and then held, uh, which was nice. And again, I went through these already, so I'll do them fairly quickly. Uh, the 200-day moving average is another really big one. Uh, I had three moves through that didn't hold, and then finally, you know, we broke through and held. Uh, the Golden Cross, another really big one within the investment community. If you talk about the Golden Cross, it's called the Death Cross the other way when it yep. comes down. And this is the 50-day moving average moving up through the 200-day moving average right there where that arrow is. Uh, and so, again, we had that. That's spectacular. Uh, and... One of the big ones for me is setting new higher highs, right? So you can see in those red circles, we were setting lower highs with big runs, huge runs, uh, but lower. And then this two green circles here, that's this January and the, the run that we're in right now. Uh, and of course, a little hard to see this, but a 20% up market is a bull market by mm -hmm. definition. We hit that last week, right? We talked about last week that the average run approximately for a bull market is five years long on the average rate of returns, about 177%. Yeah, and even the worst bull market was still a two-year run and a 50% up market. So let's let's think about that for just a second because that, that means a lot. So that means that basically everybody that's writing an article saying that the market's going to fall sometime in the rest of this year, 20%, 30%, or whatever it is, what they're talking about is something happening that's never happened, you know, in the in the data set that we're looking at here. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the data set that we're looking at doesn't probably have a pandemic. Mm -hmm. So it does make this a very strange environment. But actually, what's happened so far is that the pandemic has been on the positive side here in this year, because people are spending money getting out and doing things. And there's still people that aren't doing as much as they were doing before the pandemic started. And that's still ramping up. And I look at that as kind of like reserve pent up demand still coming online. And we just got retail sales today and it was very good, you know, yep. and that continues to go. It continues to happen. Even some signs of life in the factory arena today in the reports uh, that came out. So again, think about that for a minute. If the market is going to come back down and it turn into a bear market, which would basically be falling 20% or more from here, um, and it happened before two years were up, it'd be the first time. First time for everything, but the probability becomes somewhat low, yeah. right? So that's important to remember how this goes. And so this is the one I wanted to update because we had not broken through uh, as of last week, the high from last summer. And so you can see, uh, if you look real closely here, and actually let me switch you know, to a different view so you can see this a little better. You can see it how it bounced around right below yeah, yeah. just before. And then once it broke through, it took off. That's a little bit different than what we've been seeing on this whole chart. A lot of these breakthroughs have turned into uh, fall back down right away. Uh, this type of breakthrough is what you saw in 2021 and 2020 when things are really going. And it's actually, I think, more of a normal breakthrough. Market kind of is trying, trying to get through, and it gets through, and then whoosh, kind of fear of missing out, people sh covering shorts, whatever it is, there's things happening as far as that goes. So, uh, you know, we're, we're fully invested in this motion here. Uh, we've got some, you know, we've got our semiconductor index, we've got our cybersecurity index, we've got our ESG pieces, we have our 
uh, cloud computing, which has gone bananas, right? And yeah. uh, a lot of pieces that have some exposure to artificial intelligence that have done well. And so, you know, we're participating in this. We're ready if there's a downturn. Um, and I mentioned yesterday in my daily video uh, that be a little cautious because today is the options expiration day, mm -hmm. right? That's very volatile day. Uh, and a lot of things that actually did quite well will do poorly on a day like today. So don't be surprised at all to see some downturn in the technology in the leadership area that we've seen here, which is what I saw before the show started as far as that goes. Uh, and so that's, that's happening. And then, of course, here we are at the 16th of June. The 30th of June is the end of the quarter, just you know, two weeks away. Uh, and uh, the huge thing that happens at the end of the quarter is that these big funds rebalance, yep. right? And so you've got, let's say, a target date fund, uh, target date 2027, 20, 32, whatever it is, doesn't matter. They have certain uh, uh, targets for how much they want to have in U.S., how much in international stocks, how much in stock versus bond. And then they rebalance those back to their target ranges. And so the stock market has done a lot better than the bond market. Yeah. So we would expect over the next couple of weeks that these target funds, and these are big funds, they're huge, because uh, it's 401k money that's coming mm -hmm. in constantly. We would expect some selling of stock and some buying of bond as far as that goes. Uh, and, you know, um, again, some more potential volatility combined with that huge stretch. That's a pretty straight up market motion that's happening right now. Yeah, in the relative strength index, you can see it's way over. Yeah, it's stretched out uh, quite a bit here. And, you know, it's, I've always talked about the rubber band, right? So you kind of have a rubber band and you stretch it and you get a little bit of resistance. But the farther you pull, the more resistance you get until things kind of come back down. It can go the other way. You can get too much fall. You know, the market just falls really quickly. And then you get that kind of bounce that happens. And you can see some examples of that. Now, it's difficult to tell. You can get a fair amount of stretch either way, mm -hmm. right? So it's not, uh, you know, there's no formula for it. It's just, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at what's coming up for the next couple of weeks with options expiration and rebalancing. And I wouldn't be surprised to see us come back down and even challenge that purple line there, uh, you know, just because that's kind of the norm. And it would be, I think, healthy because a market that just goes up un unabated uh, can often come down unabated. So it's, you know, build a base, stay up there, keep on moving uh, and, you know, see how things play out. So that that's really, really critical uh, to understand. But like I said yesterday, the options expiration and rebalancing, those aren't fundamental issues. Mm -hmm. That's not lower earnings or lower retail sales or higher unemployment or whatever basic metric that you really want to look at. It is just a mechanism that happens inside the market that creates these issues. I think it's important to understand so that you're not thinking, hey, the market's telling me that things are falling apart. Make sure you've got your glasses on that say, okay, this is a weird time frame. We need to kind of let this play out because we have seen that. At the end of September, right, uh, we had a huge drop. The end of last year, we had a drop. The beginning of this first quarter, not as much happened. So right. We'll see what happens this time. But just something to be aware of, all right? So there are other things that are on my checklist, one of which was to resolve this debt ceiling. Yes? Okay, we did that. Awesome. Uh, the other is to have lower inflation. Mm -hmm. So CPI was reported today. And so this is the CPI, which is the Consumer Price Index, this is a basket of goods, right, that is put together to measure how much inflation happened, in this case, year over year. So we're looking at last month, right? So for May, how much did inflation grow over the May of 2022, right? So they're saying for the basket of goods, the whole basket, it went up 4%. Well, it hit 9 back in July yeah. of last year. So that's fantastic. Matter of fact, that chart looks awesome. Yeah. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to see that continuing to come down. The more that comes down, the more you're going to see that stock market go up. So this is a big piece of the checklist. However, we do have to be a little cautious because this is what they call top line inflation, which includes food and energy. And so food and energy is actually coming down in inflation, you know, what they would call disinflation, right? There's yeah. deflation when things get cheaper. That doesn't happen quite as often. Disinflation, which is a new word to me, but that was used by Chairman Powell a few months ago, it, which is, you know, inflation growing slower, right? And that's definitely what's been happening here. And then inflation is just, you know, uh, increasing prices. So uh, if we look at core inflation, 
which is this chart. This is taking out food and energy. Now it's at 5.33%, so it's actually higher than top line inflation. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a lot stickier. Yeah, you see that? I mean, it's just kind of hanging in there. And so one of the main things with this particular index especially has to do with rents. So mm -hmm. describe how they calculate it, because it's kind of interesting and in how, they, how they survey it. Yeah, and so um, they essentially survey, they have 50,000 samples that they try and get, and then they survey that person they stagger it so every six months they'll come back and so there's that kind of lag period between each time they survey the same person again and again so they're talking to somebody every month but not the same people so they have a groupings that they're talking to every six months yeah and they're trying to get you different areas you know try and figure out and they also don't use um housing prices they use what they consider um owner equivalent rent and so it it sometimes it's not as equivalent to housing prices. And so there's some sort of disconnect. It's probably the biggest piece. Uh, well, not probably. It is the biggest piece that's making this be sticky. Uh, according to Jay Powell, because uh, the Federal Reserve came out this week and had their meeting and said that we're not raising rates. So first pause in 15 months, which is awesome. Yep. Market has enjoyed that. Uh, and he talked about what they call shelter, uh, which is, you know, rents in this particular case and how that can be kind of sticky and how it can also be sort of a lagging indicator. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the reasons that the, that the Federal Reserve doesn't use this consumer price index as heavily uh, as they do the personal consumption expenditure index, uh, just because there is a, a, a different way and a, a bit more shelter in these. Now, rents are expensive, right? And they you know, are a big issue and they're some, a huge expense for people. It should be counted. Uh, how you count them is difficult uh, and, and, and you were telling me that Zillow has a measurement of rents based on the rents that are being asked for right now versus the rent that were being asked for last year in May. Yeah, and they're they're only in the two percent range, so yeah. it's, a, it's a it's a stark difference. Yeah, so that's the differential in lag. So what's being asked for in rent is somewhat reasonable on increase in that kind of two three percent range. And what we're seeing in rent increases in the past was higher. And so when they're going doing these surveys, there's this lag. There's some hope and expectation that this core inflation will fall throughout the rest of this year because we're starting to see that lag in rents catch up to the reality of, you know, rents normalizing a bit more, you know, in this environment. So uh, that's, that's our summary for this week. Uh, really great time frame this is fun uh i really enjoy this uh and you know so hopefully you've been able to follow along kind of showing you you know what we're working on and what have you uh and right now you know again green light the bond market is something that's a little softer we'll have to see what happens but i uh, look forward to being able to uh talk to you again we will not be having the show next week right uh but we you know every week we try to cover this uh, summaries and what have you uh so we'll try to fill that in too so Look forward to uh, seeing you next time.